Welcome to St Mary's Church as I stand outside the north door and invite you to join our online worship today. The bell ringing recording on this occasion comes from the mighty tower of Winchester Cathedral, chosen because 10 years ago to the day, a group of us on this Sunday after Ascension gathered there following a pilgrimage of four days along part of the Pilgrim Way. Some photos that were taken during that pilgrimage will be shared later in the service, as we recall some of the spiritual and physical benefits of joining in that pilgrimage. It's still a bit early to finally decide whether our planned pilgrimage this September to St Albans Abbey can take place, but we will update you as we know more in the weeks ahead. But happily though, for the first time in the last two months, I'm now able to enter the church to celebrate the Eucharist with just one videographer, Henry Present, safely recording the service for us. So I hope this brings a welcome dimension back to our worship, even though we can't all gather yet in person. Our reflection, as we prepare to start, is accompanied today by the pianist Alex Milner, who recorded on his piano at home. I'd like to thank Alex, who recorded, and to Ian Tyndale, who's recorded other organ pieces previously at his home, and to Helen and Hattie, who've also recorded a number of hymns and pieces throughout the Easter season, bringing their own personal offering to the mix. So after the opening music, we shall then sing the processional hymn, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise, as we process together to gather at the high altar under the east window, which depicts an uplifting scene of the ascension of Christ himself.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. On this Sunday, between the feasts of the Ascension and Pentecost, the Church reassures us to expect an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our own age, and to receive it afresh, as we pray that in heart and mind God will exalt us heavenwards to the place where our Saviour Christ has gone before. So as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first open our hearts to the Lord. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. 
we beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has sent by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. They returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they entered the city, they went into the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John, and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's theme on this Sunday after the Ascension contains two contrasting moods one of triumph and glory, and the other of desolation and bewilderment following the ascension of our Lord into heaven. The disciples are left deserted, bewildered and distraught, having lost their Saviour out of their sight. We, however, look back on this event, as recorded in the Bible with the benefit of 2,000 years under our belts, and can see the glory and the triumph of the ascension, and all that it signifies for the dignity of humanity which would not have been appreciated by the disciples at the time. We know, as the Church celebrates, that humanity is destined for a greater light than this earth can afford alone. We are to be drawn along by Christ's magnetism upwards in that ascending path which Christ has paved with his glorious ascension. In this way it affirms the dignity of our human nature that cannot be surpassed as Christ's humanity and therefore our humanity has its destiny near God's right hand. This is all very positive and glorious. However, the bewilderment that the disciples experienced, not knowing the life-giving power of the Spirit that would descend upon them, is the other shadow side of today's coin. And I'm reminded of something of that Spirit at certain times when I go out walking with our dog, Alfie. If it's a safe place to do so, I might leave him momentarily outside, let's say, a cafe or shop while I pop in to get something, as he looks longingly towards the door of the shop, just as the disciples longingly look to where Christ had gone. And both he and they do not really know whether there will be any return at all. They hope so, but there is an air of uncertainty about it. If the interval was extended, there would be the danger, in fact almost certainty, that Alfie would lose focus and leg it in hot pursuit of a squirrel. And similarly, as we can read in St Luke's account in the Bible, Jesus warns his disciples to stay in the city until you are empowered from on high, appreciating that they too might lose focus and get distracted. But great joy is experienced when the return appears and all are reunited. I'm not sure what the disciples' equivalent would be to Alfie's excited tail-wagging 
but surely something of that spirit would be felt as they received that empowerment, the life force of Christ which descended upon them, but now in the form of spirit, no longer of flesh and blood. And again I draw on the Alfie analogy, since part of what excites him, at our return, is being a pack animal. Dogs, as we know, love and have a need to be connected, either with each other or with their keepers, and it's a very strong bond, as we know. And the same is true, in a way, with the disciples and those who seek to follow our Saviour, who forges us into a community, as he founded the Church. As our offertory hymn expresses so well, the disciples were reassured by what was outpoured at Pentecost, underscoring that they were not alone, but sustained by a close and a spiritual and eternal bond that would never let them down. Not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. He is near us. Faith believes, not questions how. The body of Christ, of which we are also members, comes into being in a new way. And to this truth our second post-communion hymn today bears witness. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. Make us your building, sheltering others, walls made of living stone. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. It's great to be able to bring the Eucharist from the church today and to do so from the high altar where our forebears have gathered and worshipped down the centuries. I'm conscious, however, that not being able to actually receive the consecrated bread and wine is quite a different and dislocated experience as we behold the real presence of Christ in our midst but from a distance. But as Judith reminded us on Ascension Day, the church is wherever its members are. So when it comes to the time for communion today, as the host and chalice rest upon the altar, and we ponder in reflection, I have chosen as a devotional hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, which conjures up a very real picture around the Sea of Galilee, where our Lord once trod. The recording comes to us courtesy of our own choir, recorded in 2007, with thanks to Carl, Nick, Sue and the choir at the time, who lead us in this much-loved hymn, to which Walter Taylor composed the soaring descant, so appropriate at this time after the Ascension. So may I conclude in the words of the seasonal collect, which bids us all, in heart and mind, to thither ascend, and with him continually dwell. Amen.
let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, by your Holy Spirit, guide us and your church to do your will today and always. May we find comfort and strength as we meet together with those who trust in your ascended Son. And may we remember especially any for whom this is difficult or dangerous and pray for a time when all can worship freely without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as leaders of the nations face the challenges of climate and disease, we pray that the growing spirit of cooperation will continue and so bring us together to care for the planet and each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we remember the troubled places of the world and raise to you now the people of Afghanistan after the recent school attack. Comfort the grieving and the injured, and touch the hearts of those who are drawn to acts of terror, that they may recognise the evil in what they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as restrictions begin to ease and life gets busier, may there still be time to share a kind word or action, and in doing so, may it be for us and those we meet the light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for those we know who are sick and those for whom prayers have been asked on our pew sheet. May they be comforted and restored by your loving power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we remember with love those who have died recently and any whose anniversary is about now. We ask your blessing on all who mourn, and grant us, with all who have known you in their hearts, a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. 
merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us as a pledge of what is to come and has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. As we offer these gifts and our very selves, I thank all those who are able to continue with their offerings and planned giving in support of our church and of the work of the church throughout the diocese.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great High Priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving Spirit of Pentecost. Therefore all creation yearns with eager longing as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, 
for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. commend to you the notices this week on the weekly pew sheet which is available online, thanking Sally who continues to work remotely in the office. And I'm sure you'll be pleased to know too that the Sunday Club has met remotely recently with 13 young members joining in with their parents, their teachers and with Judith, keeping the group together and sharing as usual a Bible story, prayers, a song and colouring as they look forward to next week's Zoom for the Festival of Pentecost. Sarah has been doing similarly with the monthly youth club group, as has the musical team been busy each week teaching all the choristers and continuing their musical development, with thanks to you all. Please also see in the pew sheet the details of how to share a photograph of yourself for a collage to be included in next week's worship for Pentecost. The details of how to donate to Christian Aid this year, as no house collections are taking place of course, are on the weekly news sheet and in, on the website. And I hope we will all be as generous as we can to assist in that vital work around the world. We haven't quite worked out how to get a cup of coffee to share over Zoom, but I know that some of you are gathering in manageable groups to share some social time on screen and I encourage you to explore that together. So let us now join together in our final hymn, which comes to us sung by the choir of Selwyn College in Cambridge, praying that we may go where Christ has gone before, to rest and reign with him in heaven. And then our final organ voluntary today is played with a flourish by a young organist recorded in a church from the Netherlands and will no doubt send us on our way with a smile.
Let us pray. The Spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.